Hello and welcome to NSN Connect and in this series we are focusing on school level vocational education and this is the second episode where we are going to look at the larger big picture perspective of why vocationalization of school education is very important considering the times we live in and also we will try to understand the social implications and other important factors that make it imperative for us to take uh, meaningful decisions to implement vocational courses at the school level. So I would like to carry on my conversation with Professor Vinay Swaroop Mehrotra. So let's go ahead and explore more. Uh, when we talk about school level vocational education today, it is still not uh, taken off in the way it should have. Even though we have been talking about it for more than 70 or 80 years in every policy commission report. Uh, so, and you also mentioned about NEP 2020, which is recommending uh, many mandatory things to be done at the school. Uh, so, um, how do you think we can really make it happen from here? So, how do you think it has evolved and uh, probably what could be, you know, some hindrances uh, that you must have felt? And then how do we overcome them? So um, if we talk of vocational education training, it has come a long way in India over the years. Not just India, but if we talk of other countries, they have really struggled uh, mm -hmm. to, to reach the point where they are today. So if I talk of South Korea, it has the highest uh, uh, number of people who opt for vocational education training or skill development. And uh, South Korea gives credit uh, to its development to vocational education. Mm -hmm. Similarly, Germany, Switzerland. These are some of the countries which have a very strong foundation of vocational education training. So if I talk about India, um, if you look at the past, or if we go back to pre-independence or even just after independence in 1947, we will see that it was treated as inferior to academic education. And students who pursued vocational education were often stigmatized. That is, the, both the students as teachers, they felt very unimportant, mainly from the point of view of societal perspective and the low salaries that the students were getting after passing out from the vocational education. Right. Another thing which happened earlier was that the vocational education uh, under the centrally sponsored scheme of vocationalization of secondary education, which was launched in 1988, there was a streaming of vocational education. Means there was there were two streams. One was academic stream, the other one was vocational education stream uh, in classes 11, 10, 12. Yeah. What happened as a result? Uh, students who were opting for vocational education, they were not treated important. Hmm. And after passing out, they were not even getting jobs for which they were being prepared. So the skill development was not as per these standards or as per the industry requirements. And as a result, they were not able to get employment when they were getting out into the world of work. Yeah. There was a mismatch between the demand and supply, and also they were not able to get admission into higher education. So both the roads were blocked. So as a result, the scheme slowly was not accepted by the society, and it it was closed. So mm -hmm. a revised scheme was launched in 2012, along with the National Vocational Education Qualifications Framework, uh, in 40 schools of Haryana. Thereafter, in 2013, this uh, National Skill Qualifications Framework came and this NBQF was subsumed in NSQF. But yeah. this scheme continued with certain revisions in 2014. And uh, it, it went really well, very well, I would say, because uh, under this scheme, we could provide both the vertical mobility as well as opportunities for connecting with the industry demand through the sector skill councils, who are, as, as you might be knowing, that uh, who are actually preparing the qualification files yeah. and they are doing uh, assessment and certification along with the national skill development 
Corporation. Now we have NCVT also, which is the regulator, National Council for Vocational Education Training, which is the regulator now in the uh, VT space. So this perception has already changed over the time. And today vocational education is recognized as a valuable and important component of the education system. So if we talk of pre-independence era, vocational education was mainly provided through apprenticeship and informal training in traditional crafts and trade. But in post-independence era, this has been more organized through the various recommendations of the uh, committees and commissions constituted by the government from time to time to ensure that uh, vocational education and training uh, is provided to every target group, uh, which also includes, as you know, the industrial training institutes, ITIs, polytechnics, yeah. and different. Now we have skill training providers, uh, independent skill training providers uh, who are collaborating with the NSDC and other uh, organizations. So the focus is now not just on uh, providing vocational skills, but also the employability skills, which okay. has been a major issue earlier. Yeah. So uh, as we all know, we have had a uh, national policy on education 1968, which recognized the need to expand vocational education training to meet the demands of the job market. And this policy also recommended the establishment of vocational schools mm -hmm. and integration of vocational education with the general education system. Then came the new education policy, which is National Education Policy 1986. And it emphasized the uh, need to promote vocational education training to address the challenges of unemployment and underemployment. And it also recommended the introduction of work experience program. We all know we have also undergone uh, this work experience program. In fact, uh, it was known as uh, socially useful productive yeah. work the recommendations of the Ishwar Bhai Patel Committee. And after this uh, national curriculum framework came, which as you know, NCRT uh, prepares this NCA uh, in 2000, this name was changed to work education. Now it is mainly known as work education program. So this particular program was recommended by the National Education Policy 1986 and NCRT did a wonderful job in terms of implementing this work experience program or work education program. And work experience teachers were appointed. But over the years, as you know, as I mentioned, there's a social stigma attached to vocational education. People never took it seriously. Uh, there were a lot of issues uh, with regard to the implementation of the work experience program. Uh, the teachers were not trained continuously to take up this program. Uh, periods were given for other subjects. So all these things happened and as a result, this has not been taken seriously. So that is why now under this uh, National Education Policy 2020, we have now bagless days, an internship program uh, where these activities would be organized not just into the schools, but also outside the schools so that students get exposure of the various uh, competencies that are required for doing those occupations. Then came the uh, National Skill Development Policy 2009, uh, which focused on the development of the skilled workforce to support economic growth and social development. Mm -hmm. This policy recommended the establishment of National Skill Development Corporation to promote skill development and also for establishing sector-specific skill councils to oversee the skill development programs. Now, recently in 2015, this national skill development policy was introduced by the government of India with the aim of enhancing the skills of the Indian workforce and also providing uh, training to the disadvantaged sections of the society, the marginalized sections, uh, which do not have access to the uh, skill development activities. So the policy actually seeks to create a skilled workforce that can contribute to the country's economic growth and global competitors. 
uh, competitiveness uh, by uh, various measures which were taken uh, by the government. So some of these measures I would like to mention specifically here. One is the uh, introduction of the skill development mission. The policy has established, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, the national skill development mission uh, would provide an institutional framework for the implementation of skill development initiatives across the country. So the policy uh, established this and they mention, it mentioned that we need to have uh, skill development targets in place. Mm. So the policy had set a target of skilling 150 million people by 2022 in various sectors, including agriculture, manufacturing and services sector, uh, which are also known as uh, primary, secondary and tertiary sectors, respectively. It also suggested or recommended that uh, we need to encourage industry participation in skill development activities uh, by creating sector-specific skill councils, which will help in designing and implementing skill development programs that are aligned with the industry requirements. Uh, the policy also emphasized on skill certification. As I mentioned earlier, also the recognition of prior levels. We need to... Mm -hmm. Because as we all know that 90% uh, of the workforce is in the unorganized sector and they don't have any provision of recognition of their skills. So uh, with the policy recommendation, recognition of prior learning was introduced. Uh, we have now a framework. The NCVT has developed the guidelines for the recognition of prior learning. So a lot of things has happened uh, for the skill certification. Uh, for ensuring that we improve the employability of the, not just the people who are into the formal system, but also in the informal system. Yeah. So recognition of prior learning was emphasized. Incentives for skill development was also uh, recommended. Uh, we need to provide tax benefits and financial assistance to organizations involved in skill development activities. And that is why, as you know, uh, after this uh, National Skill Development Policy 2009, this National Skill Development Fund was created in 2009. So both these policies have been very important in, or I would say a great milestone in the history of skill development. And it has really uh, helped in organizing the whole system or the ecosystem uh, of skill development. It also emphasized on the gender and social inclusion. So the National Skill Development Policy 2015, 2015 has actually uh, promoted gender and social inclusion mm -hmm. by providing equal opportunities for skill development to women, scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and other marginalized sections of the society. Now we have National Education Policy 20 which is the most recent policy. And it has actually helped in defining uh, the ecosystem of uh, vocational education and training uh, by emphasizing on integrating vocational education with general education. It has also uh, focused on multidisciplinarity uh, in terms of providing multi-skills. So we need to emphasize on uh, imparting multi-skills to our students right at the early age so that uh, they can develop that kind of broad base uh, for adaptation to an occupation or to different occupations that they might have to get in because as we know today we have a gig economy so people will be looking for jobs uh, which might not be stable um, private jobs the private sector is the major sector now providing jobs. So they may have to switch over from time to time. So we need to pro, uh, make provisions for reskilling and upskilling. So the policy recommends the integration of vocational education into mainstream education and the development of a flexible and multidisciplinary vocational programs. So we need to really look at this perspective uh, of the policy. Now, in addition to these policy policy initiatives, 
A number of commission reports have also emphasized the importance of vocational education and training in India. So just to mention the major ones, uh, there are two major uh, commission report, 1964-66, uh, that is Patari Commission report, which recommended the integration of vocational education into the general education system. And it also uh, focused on in the introduction of the work experience program. The Yashpal Committee report in 2009, which recommended the establishment of vocational education training institute at the secondary and higher secondary levels. So these are the major policy initiatives with regard to the vocational education and training or skill development. And uh, as we all know, we are now implementing the recommendations of the National Education Policy 2020. And we are ensuring that uh, it starts early. So we need to introduce vocational education at early ages, uh, that is from grade six to eight, and then take it further uh, as for the job goals or the occupation-based vocational education and training that we are going to give in the schools. Okay, uh, so uh, so you've given us the complete, uh, like a chronological, you know, uh, uh, story of how things have evolved and how there have been some uh, back and forth uh, moments, I think, in adopting vocational education. But today, due to many reasons, socioeconomic reasons and demographic uh, uh, dividend that India has to reap the advantage of this. And for various reasons, uh, I think all of us agree that uh, we need to start young and catch them young and introduce them to vocational education and training, not just in government schools, but I would say even in all other schools so that uh, kids get sensitized. In this episode, you have seen how the historical factors have played a very important role and why NEP 2020 has recommended strongly for vocationalization at the school level and the developments that have happened in the entire ecosystem that are supporting the recommendations of the new education policy and how this may get implemented in various schools in India. Thank you so much for watching this episode and I look forward to having you in the next episode as well. In the meantime, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any update from us. Thank you.